Okay, so now we're going to look at solving a system of equations by elimination. Okay, now some people may also refer to this as to the addition method. Okay, it means the same thing. Okay, so elimination or addition, same thing. Okay, so we previously looked at solving systems of equations graphically and algebraically by substitution. Graphically, we graph the equations and see where they intersect. Algebraically by substitution, that's when we substituted uh, expressions in for x or y. Okay, now we're going to look as one final way to solve a system of equations algebraically by elimination. Okay, and again, all the algebraically is going to mean is that basically we're trying to solve equations with x's and or y's in them. Okay, graphically was using a graph. Algebraically means we're going to show equations and solving equations. Okay, so the basic idea behind elimination is to combine equations to eliminate a variable. Okay, now the basic example I give you here of why, of why this method is going to work. We know that 4 plus 7 equals 11. Okay, I'm not trying to trick you on this. 5 plus 9 equals 14. Well, if we look at adding them, well, if we take the left-hand sides, 4 plus 7 and 5 plus 9. So if we add the left-hand side, 4 plus 7 plus 5 plus 9 equals, let's add the right sides, 11 and 14. Okay, so we have the left side plus left side, right side plus right side. Well, 4 plus 7 is 11, 5 plus 9 is 14, 11 plus 14 equals 11 plus 14. Now the significance there is, is that we need to recognize that we had two equations and we're able to combine them together into one equation that was still true. Okay, and then we could simplify that to 11 plus 14 equals 11 plus 14. Okay, the same principles will apply if we have variables in our equations. Okay, now as we go through these, it'll, believe me, you're going to think this method is a lot easier okay, than what it may seem like right now. Okay, we're going to solve algebraically by using the addition method or by substitute, um, I'm sorry, um, elimination. Okay, so addition or elimination. Okay, now what we notice is we have a left side of 2x plus y and we have a left side of 3x minus y. And then we have equals and then the right side of 9 and 16. If we do the same thing we did up here and if we add the left hand sides 2x plus y so take that left hand side plus the other left hand side 3x minus y equals the sum of the right hand sides 9 plus 16. Well now if we combine like terms together 2x plus 3x is 5x okay so we put 2x and 3x together and then if we look at positive y plus negative y well positive y plus negative y totally cancels off okay to zero so now we get 5x bring down the equals 9 and 16 if you add those is 25 so now what we have 5x equals 25 and that's a very easy equation to solve divide by 5 we end up with x equals 5 okay so that turned into a very easy equation after that first step of recognizing to add the left hand sides together equals the sum of the right hand sides now a shorter way to do this or another way to show your work like this if you you notice how the 2x and 3x are lined up the y's are lined up the equals are lined up and then the 9 and 16 are lined up I just put a bar underneath showing that we're going to add those two equations together so 2x and 3x is 5x 1y plus negative 1y is 0 and then bring down the equals 25 okay, and again we still get x equals 5 okay so you can do it this way rather than actually showing it this way Okay, this is really the mathematical correct way to do it, okay, but this way is acceptable um, as a shortcut to your work. Okay, now we're not quite done yet because now we have x equals 5, we have to find the y value that goes along with it. Okay, so now that's a matter of 
finding y by substituting into either equation. Okay, now I'm going to use 2x plus y equals 9. I'll substitute into that equation. So put 5 in for x, so that'll be 2 times 5 plus y equals 9, so that's 10. So I'll subtract 10 from each side, and we get y equals negative 1. So what that tells us is the solution is 5, negative 1. Okay, on the next one, okay, again, we look at this and notice how we have the left-hand side has the y's, the x's, equals, and then constants. So notice how everything is lined up with its respective variable equals and constants. Okay, so the y, x's, equals, constant are all lined up. Now if we add those equations together the way that they are, 2y plus negative 6y is negative 4y. Negative 3x plus 3x, they're opposite signs, so what will happen when you add them is they cancel out to 0, or add to 0, and then 20 plus negative 8 is 12. Okay, and then divide by the negative 4, and you get negative 3. Okay, now that we have y equals negative 3, now we need to find x. Okay, and for the sake of time, we just take one of our equations. I used negative 6y plus 3x, so I used the bottom equation. You could use either one and plug in negative 3 for y. Okay, and then solve that for x. Takes a little bit of work here, but you end up with not a nice number but negative 26 thirds. Okay, so the solution is x is negative 26 thirds and the y value is negative 3. Okay, so it's that point. Okay, if you need to pause the video, go ahead. Okay, but I'm going to keep moving on. And before we do go on to the next page, when you look at the elimination or the addition method here, notice that everything is quote unquote lined up. The x's, y's, equals, and constants. So what it says up here, the y's were lined up, the x's, the equals, and the constants. Okay, so that's, that's a prime example of when you're going to use this method. So then what we can do, we combine the equations to eliminate a variable, and then we find x and y. Okay, so moving on to the next page. Okay, number three. Okay, on this one, notice that if we add the equations together, how they are, we'd have 6x, and then 4y plus negative 1y will be positive 3y, and then equals 18. Well, all that's going to do is give us another equation with x and y in it. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem like a hooting good time to have another equation with x and y in it. Okay, so there's a way we can take care of this. And it's going to come back to one basic concept. Now, just bear with me for about 20 seconds here. If I were to tell you, so ignore this example right now, if I were to tell you that x equals 5, would you agree that 2x, if you multiply the left side by 2, you would multiply the right side by 2? So 2x would equal 10. Right? So 2x equals 10. Wouldn't x still equal 5 because 2 times 5 is 10? So in multiplying both sides by 2, we did not change the value of x. x was still 5 no matter what. And we could multiply both sides of an equation by a constant. Whether it's positive, negative, a fraction, okay, it doesn't matter. We can multiply each side by a constant and it doesn't change the value of your variable. So now I'll go over to our original example. Remember, a whole point is for something, either the x's or the y's, to cancel out. So when I look at this equation, I look at the bottom one, 2x minus y equals 6, okay, and I notice that if that was minus 4y, that would cancel with plus 4y. So how do I make that minus 4y? I multiply that bottom equation on both sides by 4. So then what I would have is 8x minus 4y equals 24. 
the, the top equation is still going to stay the same because I didn't do anything with that. So 4x plus 4y equals 12. Now, if I add those equations together, 4x and 8x will give me 12x. The 4y plus negative 4y will cancel off to 0. And then equals 12 and 24, add those to get 36. So now we have an easy equation. Divide by 12, we get x equals 3. Okay. So then if we go through and finish that one, okay, again, for the sake of time, I'm going to put the answer key up of what I did. Okay, and okay, we can see I used 4x plus 4y equals 12. I substituted 3 in for x and ended up with y equals 0. Okay, so the solution is 3, 0. Okay, and again, if you need to pause that, go ahead. I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, so number 4. Okay, and this one, we look at 2x minus y equals 9, 3x plus 4y equals negative 14. Again, we look at minus 1y and plus 4y. It looks like if we multiply that top equation by 4 on both sides, then we'd have a minus 4y here, and that would cancel or add to 0 with the positive 4y. Okay, so you go ahead and write your equations. Okay, so... Okay, so I did that. I multiplied the top equation by 4. Oops, let me do this here. Sorry about that. Okay, and then if you add the 3x plus 4y equals negative 14 to the 8x minus 4y equals 36, you end up with x equals 2. Okay, and then we have to find the y value. I use the top equation 2x minus y equals 9 put 2 in for x, and then solve that. Okay, and there's your solution for that one. Okay, so the solution is 2, negative 5. Okay, and again, if you need to go through and do the arithmetic yourself and solve those equations, okay, pause the video or, or, or uh, rewind it and go ahead and do that. Okay, but moving along to number 5. Okay, this one is a little more complicated. Notice here, we have 4y, and then the other equation starts with 2x. And then notice the first equation has equals, but then the second equation has a y. So things are not lined up. Okay, so that's a problem for the elimination method or the addition method. So in order to use that method, we have to line them up first. Okay, so we'll do that by basically adding the 5x to the other side over here. Okay, so we're going to add 5x to the other side. Okay, so when we do that, oops, let me uh, make it look a little nicer here. Okay, we end up with 5x plus 4y equals negative 16. So all that is is adding the 5x to the first equation uh, on the left side. So now notice the x, y equals constants, everything is lined up. So now we're going to take those two equations, okay, those two equations, and then what we have is we want to have, I'm looking at the y's again, the 1y and plus 4y, if that was negative 4y and positive 4y, they would cancel off. So multiply that top equation there by negative 4. Okay, so the 2x plus y if we multiply each side by negative 4, okay, and then add the 5x plus 4y equals negative 16. Okay. So this equation here is coming from multiplying this one by negative 4, and then that's the equation that comes from that. And then 5x plus 4y equals negative 16 is from this one. Okay, so again, if you want to go through and do that arithmetic, I'm going to go ahead and show the answer for the sake of time.
Okay, we get x equals negative 8. And then we find the y value by going to any of our equations with x and y in it. I chose the 2x plus y equals negative 10. Okay, so I use that equation and put negative 8 in for x. Okay, you solve that and you end up with positive 6 for the y value. So the solution is 8, 6. Okay, if we continue on now. Okay, there's several questions here. Okay, so I'm just trying to be speedy. Okay, number six, we have 4x minus 3y equals 25, and 8y equals 10 plus 3x. Okay, so I'm looking at that. That looks like a big old mess. But I do recognize that if I subtract 3x from each side, they're gone over here, and we'd have negative 3x plus 8y equals 10. Okay, and then the other equation would still be the same. The 4x minus 3y equals 25. Okay, those will be the same. Okay, so all we did right here was subtract 3x from each side. Okay, now this one is a little unique because the x's are not going to cancel. The y's don't cancel, but everything is lined up, so that's good. But now what we look at, is there something we can multiply one of the y's by for them to cancel out? So for example, does negative 3 times something give you an 8? Or I should say negative 8 to cancel with positive 8y? Okay, nothing nice. Look at the x's. Does negative 3 times something give you, uh, give you a value that will cancel with 4? Okay, well, no. So, on this one, what's unique about it is we're going to multiply both equations by something. Okay, so what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to multiply the first equation by 4 on each side. And the second equation by 3 on each side. Now what that'll do, I'm looking at just the x's right now, that'll give us negative 12x in the first equation and positive 12x in the second. And we know that negative 12x plus positive 12x will give you zero x's. So, so they'll cancel out to zero. Okay, so if we do that, again we have some arithmetic here, so I'm going to skip to the answer. Okay, if we do that, those are the equations we get. Okay, this looks way more confusing than it is if you know what you're doing. Okay, it's got to get the hang of it. Okay, because there's equations everywhere. But then add those two equations together right here. Add those together. Notice that the negative 12x and positive 12x will cancel out. And you get 23y equals 115. Divide by 23 and you get 5 for y. Okay, now that we know that y equals 5... We use any equation to find x. Now, I use the first equation, 4x minus 3y equals 25. We're going to put 5 in place of y. So just go through and solve that. And you end up with x equals 10 for a solution of 10, 5. Okay, and again, if you need to go through that yourself, take your time, pause the video or, or, or rewind it, and uh, take your time and figure it out. Okay, now we have two special cases. Okay, it seems like we always have special cases. <laughs> okay, but if we take y equals 3x minus 4 and 2y minus 6x equals 10. Okay, if we solve those, now notice that this first one is set up really for substitution. If you put 3x minus 4 in place of y, that'd be one way to do it. Okay, but what I'm going to look at is if you were to subtract 3x on the first one, okay, to make it set up for the uh, elimination method. So if you subtract 3x on the first one, that's what you get here. Okay, and then if we think about how could we get the x's or the y's to cancel, well, if we multiply that top equation by negative 2, 
Okay, that'll give us negative 2y plus 6x equals positive 8. Okay, that's multiplying the top equation by negative 2. Okay, it will give us this. Now if I bring down the other one to write underneath it, okay, so this one here, if I bring that down here, Okay, we notice when we add those together, the y's cancel to 0. Positive 6x minus 6x, that'll be 0, equals 8 and 10 is 18. So we end up with 0 equals 18, and that is never true. Now this is similar to the special cases before. When we got two numbers that are not equal, so 0 does not equal 18, that's never true, so there was no solution. Okay, so basically, graphically what this is, these are two lines that never intersect. Okay, so if we were, if we were to get y equals mx plus b on these, the 2y minus 6x equals 10, we could add the 6x and then divide by 2, okay, and we end up with y equals 3x plus 5. Compare that to y equals 3x minus 4, and we can see they're parallel lines because they have the same slope but they're never going to intersect. Okay, number eight. Okay, and this one is similar in that when you look at y's are lined up, the x's, the equals, constants, everything is lined up. Now if we look at trying to cancel one of the variables, if we multiply the top equation by negative three on each side, Okay, that'll give us negative 6y plus 3x equals negative 21. Well, now when we add those two together, when we add these two, 6y minus 6y is 0. Negative 3x plus 3x is 0. 21 minus 21 is 0. 0 equals 0. That is always true. So this is the case where basically you have the same line twice. Okay, and that's always true. So there's an infinite number of solutions. Okay, now I just went through here. And I took each of those equations, 2y minus x equals 7, and 6y minus 3x equals 21. If you get y equals mx plus b for each of those, you end up getting the same equation each time. The slope is one half, the y intercept is seven halves. Okay, so they're the same line, so there's infinite number of solutions. Okay, but again, notice, notice the significance in each of these answers. When we get two numbers that are not equal, the x is totally disappeared, and we got two numbers that are not equal, we had no solution. Here the x and y's disappeared, and we get zero equals zero, or two numbers. Uh, that could have be just as easily been like eight equals eight, or 10 equals 10. As long as we get a true equation, then there's infinite number of solutions. Okay, moving on to the last one. Okay, question number nine. Okay, it's a word problem. Okay, you're on an exercise program. Uh, one spring day, it took you 1.3 hours to walk and jog a total of 5.5 miles. You want to find the amount of time you spent walking, W, and the amount of time you spent jogging, J. Okay, so using our variables, W and J, write an equation representing the total time of your workout. Well, if you think about the total time, what we know about our total time is it took us 1.3 total hours. Well, the only thing we did was walked and jogged. Well, that means if you were to take the time spent walking plus the time spent jogging, you would get the total time. Now, if this were me, there would have been a fair amount of time crawling also, or maybe sitting, sitting in a snowbank or something, I don't know. But um, the only thing you did was you walked and jogged. When you add those times, walking and jogging, you should get the total time of your workout. Well, what do we know about the time walking? We told you that the time you spent walking is W, and the time spent jogging is J. So W plus J 
should equal the total time of 1.3 hours. Okay, so there's an equation for the total time of your work hour. Part B, suppose we walk at a speed of 3 miles per hour and jog at a speed of 5 miles per hour. Write an equation that uses your variables W and J that represents the total distance of your work hour. Well again, if you think about the concept, the total distance that you go should equal the distance that you walk plus the distance that you jog. Well, how far did we walk? Well, if we go three miles per hour walking, if we go one hour, we would have went three miles. If we go two hours, we would have went three times two or six miles. If we walked for three hours, we would we would have gone a total of three times three or nine miles. So the way you find the distance that you walked is you take your speed times the, the time that you walked. So that would be 3W. For the jogging, if you walk, if you uh, jog at 5 miles per hour, the distance that you jog is 5J. So for example, if you jog for 1 hour, you would have went 5 miles. 2 hours, you would have went 5 times 2 or 10. And that will give you, when you add them or take that sum, you would get the total time, I'm sorry, the total distance of 5.5. And that's miles. Okay, so now, set up the system of, of equations and solve it for W and J. So now we have just basically copying those equations over. That's what's in blue here. Okay, and again, I, you have the answer here um, just for the sake of time. But we basically want to solve that system. Okay, so there are more than, one, one, more than one way to do this by either the elimination or the substitution method. Okay, and if you go through it, Okay, I'll put the answer up there so you can look at it. Okay, but again, once we get the toughest part of this is coming up with the equations, and then here's the answers to it. Okay, so they jogged for 0.8 hours and walked for 0.5 hours. Okay, so that's it for this lesson.